Mr. Tap G, Mr. Surfer Clock, three minutes to showtime. Thanks, Scooter. You know, Tap G, they say you're not truly a celebrity until you guest star alongside the Muppets. <laughs> that or you're caricatured on Family Guy. <laughs> Seriously. Just last week we were two guys with a podcast in Florida. Now we're guest starring on The Muppet Show. We'll share the stage with the frog, the pig, the bear, and the... whatever. You mean Steve Buscemi, Charlie Sheen, Grizzly Adams, and Christopher Walken? <laughs> hey, do you think we'll get to see Statler and Waldorf? You know, the two grumpy old guys on the balcony? Not from backstage, we won't! <laughs> Oh, but thanks for reminding me. I'll be back in a bit. Hey, where are you going? I'm going back, Marty. Back to the future! <laughs> but no, seriously, I'm going to live from New York. It's Muppets Tonight! <laughs> I'll forget you. That was funny. Note to self. Laugh track CD scratched. Buy a new one. Surfer Clock, and welcome to What's the Attraction, where our work is your vacation. And thank you, thank you everyone for coming. It is such an honor to be here at the legendary Muppet Theater tonight. And I never thought I'd see an audience this big. Huh. Although I did notice I can't see anybody from the waist down. Huh. And they tell you to imagine the audience in their underwear. <laughs> You, uh, you may be wondering why I'm alone and where my co-host, Tap G, is. Not really, we don't. Yeah, do the castle cake bit. <sighs> no, guys. I assure you that this will not be a solo act. It better not be. Skywalker and Leia can act circles around him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a second. You guys aren't Statler and Waldorf. Hey, you got the perfect face. Yeah, for radio. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you two? Tap G, where have you been? Well, I... Oh, I see you met our uh, doppelgangers from the future. Our what? I thought it more thematically appropriate to have, instead of Statler Waldorf, our future selves provide a fitting commentary. So I went into the future, picked them up from the old folks' home, and here we are. Oh, we end up in an old folks' home? Yeah, it's not so bad. Yeah, Carly Rae Jepsen performs in the auditorium every other Wednesday. How did you get our future selves here? Did you use the DeLorean? Uh, no, I used the TARDIS. Got it on loan. From whom? Not whom, who? All right, from who? Exactly. What? No, who? Doctor Who. Who? Yes. Keith Moon? Who? I'm asking you. Asking me what? Who are you? Do, 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 do. No, I mean him. Who is he? Who? Who? The first who or the second? No, no, no. Who's on first? What's on second? What? Right. I don't know. No, no, no. He's on third. Where? In Whoville. Where else? I could listen to this banter all day. Really? Yep. Forgot my hearing aid. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. Let's stop wasting time. Today, we're reviewing Jim Henson's Muppet Vision 3D at Disney's Hollywood Studios.
But first, a little history. Jim Henson was born September 24, 1936, and by the time he was 17, he had created his first TV show, Sam and Friends, a locally broadcasted Washington, D.C. sketch show that introduced a rather crude early model of what would later become Jim's most renowned creation, Kermit the Frog. It lasted for seven years. After a period of learning more advanced puppeteering techniques, Henson moved to New York, where he was approached to make and use puppets for a public access show, emphasizing education for young children. Can you guess what that show was? That's right, the ever-popular Sesame Street, which still airs to this day, helping generations count, spell, and sing their way to education, even if they weren't quite aware of it. In 1976, Henson moved to England where Kermit and Pals hit it big in the prime time with The Muppet Show. Here we were introduced to all the great characters we know and love today. Miss Piggy, the great Gonzo, Fozzie Bear, Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem, Statler and Waldorf, and so on. The Muppet movie, naturally, was Kermit and the Gang's first silver screen break and was a critical and financial success. Once the Muppets and other darker projects like Labyrinth were gaining traction in the public eye for Henson, he began to look for a parent company to assume control of the business end of his Muppet franchise so he could concentrate on the creative end. Enter Mickey Mouse. Hello! Hi there! Welcome to my pod! Um, no. Uh, good try though, Rizzo. In 1989, Henson entered negotiations with the Walt Disney Company as a possible merger. A made-for-TV movie, The Muppets Visit Walt Disney World, was made to test the waters as well as the attraction Muppet Vision 3D. But then, tragedy struck. In 1990, Jim Henson contracted a nasty virus that led to pneumonia, and as a result, he died at the age of 53, leaving a legacy of greatness behind. The negotiations with Disney went into terminal limbo. Though Disney aided in its own spin-off TV series, Muppets Tonight, and films Muppet Treasure Island and A Muppet Christmas Carol, a solid negotiation between the two never gelled. But in 2004, all speculation was put to rest when the Disney company bought the Muppets franchise, though not the Sesame Workshop. The 3D show at Disney's Hollywood Studios is one of the very last projects by Henson himself, and we have the privilege of hearing Henson's very voice as Kermit the Frog and the Swedish Chef. These guys remind me of Siskel and Ebert. Yeah, fat and whiny. <laughs> you know, in hindsight, this was not one of my better brainstorms. But that's enough of that. Let's take a walk through, shall we? When you enter the Muppet Courtyard, you know you're in a world of unfocused insanity almost immediately. Wacky nonsensical signage, paint splattered willy-nilly, Gonzo hanging off the clock tower, even the off-kilter fountain with Miss Piggy, Fozzie, and Animal. Now... Let's say you're just crazy enough to go inside. And it ain't easy. Being green. Hey, leave the jokes to the bear! Yeah, at least he's funny looking. <laughs> Seriously, how did it grow so curmudgeonly bitter? Yeah, why do we... churn butter? Were you hard of hearing or just not very bright? What? I said, were you hard? I heard you! <laughs> Here. I can't! The TARDIS is back with the doctor! Use the DeLorean! It's in the shop, remember? The flux capacitor sprung a leak. We don't have anything? Well, um... Oh, I could use Calvin's cardboard box, but Hobbs won't... Fine, fine, fine. Take them back to the future! Now! Great Scott! So sorry for these constant interruptions, folks. We're gonna get our review going again in a little bit. So while Tapji goes and returns our... charming commentators, We'll take a brief intermission. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah. And now a word from our sponsor. Until next week. Sheesh. Flumity flum the flum to York about the Ravager. No pork 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 to be continued. Pork pork.